happy Founders Day. I bet you are excited. There is no school tomorrow. What have you planned for the day? Let us know on our Facebook wall. Well, coming up today, tuberculosis in children is on the rise. We speak to a 13-year-old girl who shares her story on how she got the disease. But before all that, some homes in Osu earmarked for demolition. How can you sack your own people, your indigenous people whom you say you are, you are chief over them? and you are sucking them from here. Where do you expect them to go? Pupils of the Kotobabi 13 cluster of schools have to walk long distances to use the washroom. When they say call the last camp, you don't know that somebody will come, come and put food out here. Then the house will come and step on the food and he will eat it. Now you don't know what to do. And Scotland votes to remain part of the United Kingdom. Please stay with us. My name is Ifo Akwa Harrison. Supported by Cowbell with Vitorid. Remember, you can always catch up with us on social media. We are on facebook.com forward slash newsgenerationgh or on Twitter at newsgengh. Now on to our first story. And just a few weeks after pulling down makeshift structures at Mensa, Guinea without adequate notice, the AMA has earmarked structures in Osu Aniho to be pulled down. This time around, about 2,000 residents, including a school structure, would be affected. Residents of yet another slum threatened with eviction by city authorities. This time, Osu Aniho is in the spotlight and with the only school in the area. The AMA served residents' notice on Tuesday, 16th September to pack out by 19th September. They had only three days and they were not amused. But it is not pathetic because how can you sack your own people, your indigenous people whom you say you are, you are chief over them, and you are sacking them from here? Where do you expect them to go? The only school in the slum nestled behind the Christianburg Castle and has some 150 pupils. The planned demolition means the people's education hangs in the balance as well as their families' hopes for shelter. The children have just spread out. Some of the parents are very afraid. They don't know where to stay. Some of them are collecting their things. They don't know where to go. So some of the children too are not coming. Up to now, I'm telling you. It's very pity for us. People do not necessarily oppose the demolition exercise. It is the manner in which it is carried out. Ordinarily, it takes longer than three days to find accommodation, especially for low-income earners. Without finding new accommodation, many victims of such exercises are rendered homeless. The Accra Metropolitan Assembly flouts a lot of laws and regulations when conducting such exercises such as the UN Convention on Evictions. By the end of day, 19 September, the exercise had not been carried out. Reports say residents secured an injunction preventing the Accra Metropolitan Assembly from demolishing their structures. Are you also going to be affected by the demolition exercise or do you know anybody who will be affected? Let us know on facebook.com forward slash newsgenerationgh. Now, how would you feel if you had to walk for at least 20 minutes just to attend nature's call? Well, that is the ordeal pupils of the Kotobabi 13 cluster of schools have to deal with on a daily basis. The school has no toilet facilities, so pupils have to walk long distances to use the nearest public toilet. Justice Forsen has the rest of the story. This is a typical day in the lives of pupils of the Kotobabi 13 cluster of schools. A time for them to let down their hair as they take a break from their lessons. But as they go about eating and playing, they are also mindful of the fact that they would have to walk at least 20 minutes should they feel the urge to attend to nature's call. So if they are unable to do the 20 minute walk, they direct their focus to this refuse dump on the school's premises. The first we have toilet here, but now, like they said, they are going to build a school for us. Know that they, they have break all the toilet. Now we go to toilet that that place that plenty sun is there. Eh? So we we'll go the back. Some people some people can go to toilet and pay, but some too can go here and go and do toilet at there. When like we told them, they'll say, eh, and so 
they, they'll say that where, now where is the toilet that you can shit? So they'll say to go, go, go and shit. Now when they say call last come, you don't know that somebody will come, come and put food out here. Then the house will come and step on the food and he'll eat it. Now you don't know what to do. But the pupils are not particularly happy about the situation. Interestingly, each student is said to have paid five Ghana cities as contribution towards the building of this toilet facility in the school. They, they told us that we should pay some amount of money so that we build urina and toilet at the back of the school. And they did five, five cities. Yes, we paid it and they didn't build anything. School authorities would not want to comment about the issue but point to officials from the Submetro Education Office who were already on the school premises. But the Submetro officials would also not comment on the matter. The pupils, however, still wanted to put their case across. This angered the Submetro officials who confronted the news team. No, you say you are not the head. I said we are coming from the Submetro. And what you said, I told you, I am taking it up. Didn't you hear that? We are taking it up. Fine. So why? Oh, you said that's it. Yes, that's it. Okay, fine. You try and take it and take, and you're also taking it. You have seen what it is. You have seen, and I'm going to report it. The assemblyman for Mamobi West, Al Haji Abu, says he's aware the school has no toilet facility, a development he says the assembly is working to rectify, but goes on say. He's not aware the pupils have had to pay monies for the construction of the toilet facility. Uh, the step that the assembly is taking is like I told you, we're going to rehabilitate the one because the manhole is there. In the school building there are toilets which are being misused, which we are, the cities are broken. So immediately the assembly is going to rehabilitate and I told you it has been given on contract. As I speak, I've not heard of anything. That monies are being taken from school children to construct this toilet facility for them. Yes, and I would like from here, I would like to go to the school compound and know who collects the money. And for what purpose do they collect the money? Because AMA are the administrators of the city. Now, no any teacher or headmaster or headmistress can construct a toilet on this or her own. Justice Kwasi Forsen's report for Joy News. And moving on, government has shut down some 89 orphanages in the country to stop more homes from being set up. According to the Gender, Children and Social Protection Minister Nana Oyelitha, licensing an orphanage would cost 5,000 Ghana CDs and renewing it will cost 2,000. So we have been asking what you think. Here's what's up. I think closing down 89 orphanage homes is not appropriate because children need, you know, protection. And then that's the uh, children on the street, the orphanages, they need a place to, you know, um, nurture them. Since some of the orphanages have schools and recreational centers to portray what is in them. And also they need, you know, you see some of the orphanages, they don't have food to eat. So when they come into the orphanage homes, they are fed to give them balanced diet to grow well and stronger. Uh, the Minister of Gender, Children and Social Protection should not cancel out the orphanages because she has elected as the minister. And when she does that, there will be no social protection. And most of the children will become homeless. And some of them have talents in them which needs to be exploited. They can help the country in the future and they all develop their country. Maybe she has a reason for doing that, maybe to reserve some of the government's money, but the children are very important. The children is our future. The children is the hope of the land. So managers who send these kids to the streets and they have contracts malaria. Since they'll be sleeping under stalls and on appropriate places, they can be bitten by mosquitoes and contract malaria or even cholera. They've been eating bad food and not um, hot food or something like that, so they can contract diseases which can affect the nation hard. When the orphanages are shut down, the children will be left homeless. Then they may start to engage in social vices such as prostitution and robbery, then to like increase the risk of danger in the society. I have a question for the Minister of Gender and Social Protection. Where should these children go? Because all of them, most of them are orphans and the orphan managers can't say they are keeping all of them because there are too many to handle. 
your views on WhatsApp. Now, children in the first batch of the out-of-school program in Tyne District, Bongahafu region, graduate. Utilities regulator, PURC, demand load-shedding timetable from ECG and some teachers threaten strike action. Let's find out more. 476 in the Tyne district of Brong Ahafo region who enrolled in the Contemporary Basic Education program have successfully graduated. The figure presented 95% of the initial enrollment of 500 on the program. The initiative was implemented by Action Aid Ghana in collaboration with the Ghana Education Service. The Contemporary Basic Education Program is a Ministry of Education project aimed at helping out-of-school children between the ages of 8 and 14 years to read, write and count. The Public Utility and Regulatory Commission PURC says the Electricity Company of Ghana must produce a schedule for its latest load shedding exercise or phase sanctions. ECG has failed to produce a timetable for the current power outage following the shutdown of two thermal energy plants. ECG says load shedding is expected to intensify. The Coalition of Concerned Teachers has threatened a nationwide strike over government's refusal to meet the demands of its members as promised. The group says government has failed to pay their arrears, which include teachers' transfer grants. The group is also asking the GES to reverse its decision to sack some 30,000 pupil teachers. We'll be right back after this. When your kids need it all, there's only one drink that's got it. Cowbell Chocomalt. It's got the delicious taste of chocolate, the nourishment of malt, the all-round goodness of milk and sugar for energy, all in one sachet. All I add is water, hot or cold. Now, that's real value. And that's real teamwork. Cowbell Chocomalt, four-in-one value with a great new taste. And you're still watching News Generation. Have you liked our Facebook page yet? It's News Generation GH. Or you can also find us on Twitter at News Gen GH. Now, when was the last time you heard something about tuberculosis? Well, a lot of people, especially parents, seem to have forgotten about protecting children from TB. But young people still suffer from the disease. We spoke to a 13-year-old girl whose real name we have withheld for her protection. She tells us how she got tuberculosis. I live with my father, my mother and my younger brother. We close all windows when we are to sleep. What type of room do you live in? 13 year old Lamisi Azindo says she lives in a single room with her family of four. She caught tuberculosis from her parents. My mother first got the disease, and because I sleep by her in the room, I also contracted it. When it started, I was coughing seriously with severe headache. Tuberculosis is a viral disease that attacks the lungs. It is also communicable. This means it is spread easily and can kill infected people if not detected and treated early. Daniel Sam Crab and Rose Awopeni both work in a private clinic in Accra. They say early detection is important. Uh, TB is caused by uh, microbacterial organisms. With children, um, when there is cough, normally with children, when there is cough for about two weeks, we ask them for, to come a free test of a uh, sputum test. And sometimes the person may not have it immediately because maybe the immune system is good. But by and by, if the infection is there, the, 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 finally the person will develop out with the, that TB infection. Some years back, 
it was much, much better because the logistics were coming, the government were giving us things. So even we go out to talk about it, we give talks and people come in to check in. But nowadays it's not like that. So at times, if their own self, they find that they are coughing or they are having a problem, they walk in and when they check and it's TV, the drug is given to them free of charge. Unfortunately for these young people here, most live with adults in unventilated rooms. Like Lamisi, some infected parents put them at greater risk of catching the disease. Executive Director of Omega Project Management Foundation, David Afra says, Ghana is not doing enough in the fight against TB. We are doing a lot about TB, yet we are not really getting to the results that we want to get to. Now that is across whether adults or children. Uh, children are more prone to TB. Children have lower immune system. So if the child is suffering from TB and it is taking too long to detect it, the immune system in itself would have been over destroyed. It's a collective work. As we are in the community as NGOs, mobilizing, referring people to the hospital, the facility should be alert. The nurses should be alert. The doctors should be alert. The pharmacies who the, the doctors have written prescription of uh, cough. When you go, you should ask the patient, have you tested for TV? You say no. Re the pharmacist should be able to refer the mother of a child to the hospital, back to the laboratory. So a uh, pharmacist said, uh, recommended that I should do TB tests also. Then, yes, the drugs for cough can be bought. So the nurses, people at OPD, everywhere in the hospital, every health worker should become aware that hey, TB is real, HIV is real. Once a child tests for TB, they should test the child for HIV also. And once we test the child for HIV, we should be testing the parent for HIV. So we can do holistic approach to treating all of them and stop the spread. Lamisi Azindo also says parents should always send their children to health facilities for TB testing whenever these children develop symptoms. If your child is showing those symptoms, you have to pay attention to him or her and ask how he or she feels. More importantly, you have to send the child to hospital for checkup, including tests for TB, else the child could go through a lot of pain. So what's up in the world of sports? Here's a roundup. Former Ghana coach James Kwesiapia and top officials of the Ghana Football Association are expected to appear before the World Cup Presidential Commission of Enquiry on Tuesday, September 23. Reports indicate the ex-Black Stars coach and the FA officials were served with an invitation letter on Friday. Kwesiapia and the FA officials are expected to answer questions over Ghana's participation at the 2014 World Cup in Brazil. Tottenham fullback Asui Koto has been banned for three matches after being found guilty of improper conduct in relation to Nicolas Anelka's Kenel gesture. Asui Koto, 30, has also been ordered to pay a £50,000 fine by the English Football Association for making a comment on social media. Anelka was banned for five games and fined £80,000 for making the Kenel gesture which is associated with intense dislike of Jewish people after scoring for West Brom at West Ham in December. Asu Ikoto used Twitter to congratulate Anelka on his use of the gesture. China's two-time Grand Slam winner, Nina, has announced her retirement after failing to overcome chronic injuries. The 32-year-old world number six won the Australia Open in January to add to her 2011 French Open title. However, she had not played since losing in the third round at Wimbledon in June and underwent knee surgery in July. To be 
or not to be part of the United Kingdom? This is a question that Scotland plagued the world with for weeks. Well, they finally decided to stay married to Britain. But how did they reach this point in the first place? Independent Scotland, especially with the possibility of companies moving out of Scotland. I'm undecided on my vote. I want a government which will represent me and my values. And while I don't feel Westminster does that effectively right now, I need more evidence that an independent Scotland's government will. If you are hoping for a job in financial services, in the new modern technologies, it must make sense to keep together. I totally agree with his point. I don't understand how you can ignore a loss of billions of pounds in share prices. I don't. Yeah, clearly uh, the companies don't have faith in an independent Scotland and mm. they won't invest in a country they don't have faith in. Scottish teenagers discuss the pros and cons of remaining part of the United Kingdom. According to statistics, 72% of 16 and 17 year olds voted to break away from Britain, but that did not change the bottom line. This is not the first time in history the Scots have had second thoughts about the United Kingdom. Let us take you back to 1295 when King Edward I of Britain invaded Scotland and Scottish lords were forced to pledge their loyalty to him. In 1297, the Scots rebel. It is not successful, but this creates centuries of back and forth between the Scots and the Brits. Centuries later, in 1707, the Act of Union was passed by the parliaments of Scotland and England to create the United Kingdom of Great Britain. This gives a worsening economic situation in Scotland a way out and Britain more power. Fast forward to the 21st century and issues with the economy, jobs, health care and general standard of living forces First Minister of Scotland Alex Salmond to dream of independence from the UK. Well, Scotland has voted to stay in the United Kingdom after voters said no to independence Friday morning. The Yes camp has had some victories, including Glasgow and Dundee, but that was not enough to secure victory overall. Talks will now begin on giving more powers to Scotland a sign of greater autonomy for the Scottish side from England. Let's take a trip around the world. A three-day curfew has begun in Sierra Leone to enable health workers find and isolate cases of Ebola it is believed the exercise will stop the spread of the disease. Many people have been reluctant to seek medical treatment for Ebola, fearing that diagnosis might mean death, as there is no proven cure. A team of 30,000 people is going from house to house to find those infected and distribute soap. French jets have carried out their first strikes against Islamic State militants in Iraq. A statement from the office of the French president, Francois Hollande, said planes had attacked an IS depot in northeast Iraq and there would be more raids in the coming days. The U.S. has carried out more than 170 airstrikes against the jihadist group in Iraq since mid-August. IS remains in control of dozens of cities and towns in Iraq and Syria. The first person to buy the iPhone 6 in Perth, Australia probably became the first person to drop it. Jack Cooksey queued overnight to purchase the device only to drop it as he was being interviewed by a television station. There were cries of shock from the crowd as his new gadget landed on the ground. The phone survived, thankfully. So that's it for this edition of News Generation. Thank you for hanging out with us. Enjoy the holiday. Bye. News Generation, supported by Cowbell with Vitamin.